Hi everyone, in this video we're going to be talking about naming hydrocarbons, thinking about the systems and processes that we use to come up with a unique name for the hydrocarbon structures that we come across. Uh, now these rules are things that we will come across and we will use in all sorts of areas. We're introducing them first in this module, but we will revisit them again um, in subsequent modules. Okay, so let's begin with an overview. So we're going to talk about <clears throat> the parts of the name that we give to a hydrocarbon. So thinking some of the parts that we or processes we'll look at, we'll look at stem, suffix, branches and numbers. We're going to look at the naming rules that and process that we can follow called nomenclature um, to help to come up with that unique name and then also go over some worked examples to help us um, to, to really kind of apply those rules. So let's start by looking at the first part of the name, which we call the stem. So the stem of the name of our hydrocarbon relates to the number of carbons in that compound. But it's not just the number of carbons in the whole structure, it's specifically the number of carbons in the longest unbranched chain that we can draw or that we can make. And so you can see from the, the table here that the number of carbons from one to eight has a specific kind of stem linked to it. Um, numbers one to four, meth, eth, prop, and but will look a bit strange. Um, from five to eight will, should look a bit more familiar because they're the same Greek prefixes you'd have used in maths, um, looking at shapes, pentagons and hexagons and so on. Um, now, unfortunately, like with learning any new language or any new process, that this, are, this is just information that you'll have to memorize. Uh, you'll have to know which is which, but with practice, you'll get it. So that's the stem. The next bit that we're interested in is called the suffix. Now, we've talked about the fact that um, that hydrocarbons come in a whole bunch of different families. Um, so these kind of related groups of compounds that have a, a common characteristic, um, you know, maybe a certain kind of combination of atoms or a certain type of bonding that exists. So we list some of the families here on the left. Um, so the simplest family that we would come across is our alkanes, all single carbon-carbon bonds. And so if it's in the alkane family, we give it the suffix ane. Alkene, we have ene. Now cycloalkanes, now just, just to, to kind of remind you that they're not specifically required for our HSE syllabus, but it, it's a bit like having a missing puzzle piece if we left it out. Um, rather than a suffix that we actually put cyclo as a prefix in front of the rest of the name to show that it's actually in a ring structure. Uh, haloalkanes will also have an ane suffix, but we'll, we'll look at naming those in the next video. And then we see alkanols and alkanoic acids as a extra um, compounds with, with a, a, a newer or different type of suffix, but we'll address those more specifically in subsequent modules. Um, so you'll, you'll see them again. So the suffix tells us about the family. But now in, in some situations, what we see is that the hydrocarbon actually isn't one straight line chain of carbon atoms. What we have here, you can see the red part here is what we would consider to be the main chain or the longest unbranched chain of carbons. You'll notice that it's three carbons long. But that means that this section in blue over on the side is not part of that chain, but it's still got a carbon in it that we need to consider. We would say that that section is a branch off the main chain, just like branches off the trunk of a tree, you know, are connected, but they're smaller or kind of, or they're, they're less than the main trunk. Um, and so, we need to actually develop a, a way to name the, the branches to show that they are a branch and not part of the main thing, but also to reflect what they are and how big they are. So we would use the same stems that we saw in the, you know, a couple of slides back, um, looking, you know, meth for one, eth for two, and so on. But in order to show that they're actually attached to something else, we use a suffix of yl. So meth becomes methyl, eth becomes ethyl, um, to show that they are a branch off the rest of the chain. But now the thing is, in order to, to make sure that our, num, our name for our hydrocarbon is unique um, and specific and unambiguous, that we need, in, in many situations, not all, but many, um, we need to use a process of numbering to help um, clear up any confusion, to show exactly where things are attached. So you'll notice in the, the pictures here, I've got the same image of the same compound twice. I'm going to show you uh, how we can actually use a process of numbering to help us here. So these numbers have the technical name called locants. Now, I'm not really going to use that term very much, at all. I'll get only as much as I have to, um, because that is the technical word, but most people don't 
really talk that way. Um, yeah, but so that's just so that you know the technical label. Okay, so what we do is that we assign numbers to each functional group in the compound. Now this is a haloalkane, we'll talk about in the next video. So because it has a bromine atom in place of one of the hydrogens. Um, and so what we wanna do is we want to um, use numbers to show which carbon that's attached to. So we have to, we number each of the carbons in the chain. Now the thing is we can number from either end of the chain. Both would be possible. So you can see here on the left, I've got numbers one to four from left to right. That's the red writing. And then on the blue writing, I've numbered from right to left instead. Now, the thing is that both of these are equivalent. Both, both of them we could say that we could do, but the reality is that we always have to make a preference. <clears throat> and the overriding principle here is that we pick, we number from whichever end gives us the lowest possible number for our functional group. So we see that the, the one on the left gives us uh, the number for two for what the carbon that's attached to, whereas the one on the right gives us number three. Two is lower than three, therefore that numbering that way is the preference, and that's what we would use. Okay, so when we're using the numbers, um, you know, that we, we, yeah, we use that to, yeah, I'll, we'll talk about it a bit more in a minute. Okay, so then looking at multiple functional groups. So you can come across an example like this one, um, where you can see that you have two different, or, you know, two separate functional groups. In this particular example, they're identical to each other. Um, they don't have to be. Um, but we need to be able to identify that we have more than one of the same functional group or more than one functional group. So what we use, we, we use the prefixes of di, tri, and tetra, which is Greek for two, three, and four. And you could do penta and so on if you really came across something like that, but they're, they're pretty unusual. Um, <clears throat> and so what we would say is that because each of these groups has one carbon, it, you know, it's a methyl group. Because we have two lots of them, we say we would use dimethyl in our, um, in our name. Now, what we would have to do is we have to put a number for each group. Um, and so we would use two numbers, even though you can see these carbons are attached to the same carbon on the chain, this middle bit, that we would need to use a number for each. So it's four carbons long, so it's butte. It's got all single bonds, so it's an alkane. So the, the chain here is a butane. We've got two methyl groups, so it's dimethyl butane. And then in order to, to give these things a number, we can number from left to right, so one, two, three, four, or right to left, so one, two, three, four. If we number from left to right, we give the lower number to the, our functional group, so that's the way we'd pick it. So it would be two comma two dash dimethyl butane is how we would do it. Now I realize I haven't got that written down, but just to show you that sort of process that we would follow. All right, so let's talk through the number, let's talk, talk through the rules a bit more specifically. Okay, so first we identify the number of carbons in the longest unbranched chain and we assign a stem. <clears throat> Next, we look at the bonding to identify what hydrocarbon family that we have and then put in the appropriate suffix. Is it an alkane, alkene, so on. We look and see if there's any branching carbon groups. We give them the appropriate stem and the YL suffix and attach them to the, the main, the rest of the chain in our name. And then we look at the numbering. So we want to get the lowest overall set of numbers or locants. That's the goal that we, the one that we're going to pick. We need to then put the numbers directly before the functional group they refer to. When you've only got one group, it's not quite so critical. Um, but you can see that as soon as you get two, three, four different functional groups, you need to make sure that you keep the number close so that it's clear to see what's what. We also, by convention, thinking about, you know, like if we're learning a new language, this is some of the grammar, that the height we use hyphens between when we write down numbers and words. So a hyphen between numbers and words. And if we happen to have more than one number in, the, in a set, like in that previous example, we use a comma between it. So we would have two comma two hyphen um, uh, hyphen dimethylbutane. Okay, so let's look at, we'll go through two examples to finish off. Okay, so looking at the structure that we've got here, you can see there's lots of different things going on. The first thing to look at 
is to count up how many carbons we've got in our longest chain. So we can see we've only got one chain here. We don't have any branches to worry about. So, and it's six carbons, which means it's, the stem is a hex. Now, the thing here is we've got to look at the bonding. And we can identify that we have a double carbon-carbon double bond going on. And so what that does, that means that we're now part of the alkene family. So we have the suffix of ene. And so then what we have to do is we've got to follow our process of numbering. Now, if we number from left to right, one, two, three, four, five, six, we see the carbon-carbon double bond is between four and five. If we number from right to left, we see it's between carbons two and three, which is lower. So that's what we're going to pick and stick with. So you can, we can imagine that the other numbers have disappeared. Okay, so car, the, the double bonds between carbons two and three. So we would say that it, its number is the two, the lower of that pair. And so then we'd give it the name of two hexene. Notice that we have the hyphen between the number and the word. Let's look at the last example to finish off. Okay, so here again, the structure looks a bit complicated, but the process is simple once you kind of follow it through. Um, all right, so what we what we have here, we look at, again, look at our longest carbon chain. Okay, so we can count up one, two, three, four, five. So we have our stem is pent. We look at our bonding and we can identify this functional group over here on the side that's not carbon or hydrogen. That OH group tells us that it's part of the alkanol family, so it'll have the suffix anol. So we've got pentanol as kind of the, 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 the base so far. Now, same process of numbering. We can number from left to right or we can number from right to left. Now, in this situation, it actually doesn't matter because you'll notice that both in both ways, that the carbon that we're talking about here is carbon number three. So it has the locant of three, so we would give it the name of three pentanol. And so there we have it. Thanks very much for watching, guys. Bye for now.